Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, DZ Can Toys, where I do reviews and share my thoughts on some of my favorite toy releases. Hope all of you guys are doing well. Today we have something very exciting to look at, and it is the SH Figure Arts line Dragon Ball Great Ape Vegeta. Here we have a look at the box. Make sure you guys stay till the end of the video to check out some cool pictures that I will be taking with today's figure. Also, for those of you who are new to the channel, please support the channel by liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate that. My first impressions on the box art it is very similar to all the other Dragon Ball SH Figure Arts releases that we got so far. We have box art all around with a clear window in the front. But what's different for the Great Ape Vegeta is the box is actually much bigger. So I'm going to show you guys a size comparison to get an idea. So here's the Kaioken Goku that we got recently. And also for a bigger box that we got recently from the SH Figures line, the SH Figures Ginyu. As you guys can see, the Great Ape Vegeta box is humongous. So let's open him up and check him out. Here we have the Great Ape Vegeta unbox, and let's have a quick 360 view on this massive figure. A little bit of a background on today's figure and character. So the figure we see in front of us is the Great Ape Vegeta. The Great Ape form is actually very famous in Dragon Ball and is also known as the Ozaru form. It's a fictional transformation in the world of Dragon Ball that originated from Son Goku. Eventually, it became a transformation used by the race of Sangs in Dragon Ball Z and GT. So after they turn into this, they will have a tremendous amount of power and turn into a berserker-like form. The transformation happens when the sunlight is reflected by the moon and it contains a green spectrum radiation. During the full moon, when the radiation exceeds 17 million Zeno units per second, the Ozaru transformation will happen. A very few select number of Sangs can also actually transform without the presence of the moon. What they do is they can compress planet's atmosphere into a small power ball, which perfectly resembles a full moon. This technique, however, drains a big portion of the user's key. So in the manga, Vegeta is actually the only Sang shown capable of performing this technique. Now let's move on to the aesthetics and paint drop of the figure. So the Ozaru Vegeta or the Great Ape Vegeta in terms of sculpting is very well done. I have to give big props to Tamashi Nations and Bandai for this release. A lot of the details is captured very nicely, especially when we look at the figure from the head on, we can see that the sculpt is extremely detailed for the ape head. Taking a closer look at the head, we can tell that Bandai Tamashi Nations really took their time with this one. The details of the hair is extraordinary as each individual strand is sculpted in a very free-flowing form. The ears are very detailed as well as we see that within the ear, the sculpting is done. Now, looking at the face, the bright red eyes represents the Ozaru form very nicely. I especially like the details on the jaw as we see all of the individual protruding teeth. They're nicely painted in the white color with no paint bleeding on my figure as well. Overall, the head sculpt, I'm very happy with it. Moving on to the details of the body, they're very impressive as well. As we know in the fight between Goku and Vegeta, before turning into the Great Form, Vegeta was already battle damaged. It makes sense that after turning into the Great Ape Form, his battle armor will retain these damages. We can see these details of the damage through these scars, dents, and cracks within the armor, and also the shoulder pads. Another nice battle damage detail that they included, which is accurate to the manga and anime, is the shoulder armor on the right side of the figure. We can see that compared to the left side, it is broken in half, and this damage was from the battle between Vegeta in his previous fight before he turned into the Great Ape form, so very nicely done. Visible rib sculpts are nicely represented on the arms and hands as well. Here's a closer look. The battle damaged rib sculpts continues all the way to the legs and feet. The eye catching feature here is on the right leg of the Vegeta figure and on our left side. We can tell that the battle suit has been damaged and ripped apart. That's why we see the inner part of the leg of the great ape. This part is represented very nicely because we can see the fur details. Here's a closer look at the hair sculpt work on the knees. 
In terms of the paint job, the Grape Ape Vegeta gets a huge thumbs up from me. The color separation is done nicely in the face with the dark brown for the ape hair and the lighter brown for the skin tones. The bright red color of the eyes really pop as I mentioned earlier. The signature Sang armor is separated into the white and yellow color, with the battle suit being the dark blue color. The white also extends to the hands, which is the gloves of the figure and the boots of the figure. Compared to the other recent releases, what I really like about this figure is, upon close inspection of this Great Ape Vegeta, I can't see any or find any type of paint bleeding or paint defects. So big props to Bandai Tamashi Nations for their quality control on this figure. In terms of accessories for the Great Ape Vegeta, we have some very interesting ones here. Now let's check them out. For the face sculpt, there's only one extra face plate. How we swap the face sculpt is basically we take this off, take this part off, take the other one on, and put this back. Here we have a look at the second face sculpt. So this one represents the injured eye, Great Ape Vegeta, which is when his eyes was injured during the battle. So this is very nicely detailed. For the hand accessories, we have the standard open palms which came attached to the figure. Then we have the two closed fists. We also have one pointing right hand, so only one. And this one represents the scene where Vegeta in the Great Ape form was trying to make his aim more accurate by using his finger to attack the other Saiyan fighters. Now the last hand accessory is actually a gripping hand. This hand is very unique as it's sculpted with Goku in the grip of the hand. Let me show you guys. So this is the back. And this is the front. We can tell that the expression of Goku here is done very nicely as well. He seems to be in pain with the huge power of the Great Ape Ham gripping his body. After attaching this accessory to the Great Ape Vegeta, it looks something like this. Out of the box, we also have two tail accessories. One is the full tail, the one that we see here, and it can attach to the Great Ape Vegeta through the ball joint system. So once attached, it looks something like this. The other tail accessory that we get is the small one. The cut off tail is supposed to represent the iconic scene where Yajirobe cuts off Vegeta's great ape tail to force him back into his human form. As we mentioned about the cut off tail and Yajirobe, this figure also included a minifigure of Yajirobe. So that's extremely cool. Let me show you guys that. The final two accessory to show off is the stand. So we have a stand for the Great Ape Vegeta. Although he can stand pretty well on his own due to his weight and the size of his feet, but it's very nice that they included an action stand as well. This stand is also a three-point harness style. So we have the two individual adjustments here and we have one support at the bottom which you cannot adjust. So that's very nice and should be secured for Vegeta for some in the air poses. In terms of the stand articulation, of course, it can move up and down. And it can also move up and down here. It's two ratchet joints, one here and one here. Although we can't adjust the height of the stand. This is the last piece of the extra accessory. This is actually a stand for Yajirobe's minifigure. What we do is attach it to the side of the stand like this and plug Yajirobe in. With this mini stand, we can now represent and recreate the scene where Yajirobe cuts off the great ape Vegeta's tail. Moving on to the articulation. So let's check out the head articulation. First, we have a front and back and side to side. So 360 may be possible, but when you turn the head to a certain point, it will be hindered by the design of the armor here. The mouth actually has an articulation as well, which we can see it opens and closes. So that's pretty nice. Moving on to the arms, the shoulder pads can go in and out, 
and forward and backwards a tiny bit too. As for the arm, we can go all the way up. 360, it's no problem. And the shoulders, we actually have a butterfly joint. It's very interesting, the design of it. Let me show you guys that as well. So here is a closer look. Due to the butterfly joint that I just showed you guys on the arm, it enhances the figure's arm articulation. So a crossed arm pose like this is possible. Now let's further check out the arm. We have a spin here at the top, at the bicep, and the arms will go up about this far for the elbow bend. It's not really a full 90, but it's good enough. And for the hands, it's on the ball joint, goes up and down and 360. Moving on to the waist, we have a front and back. Show you guys a clear view on the side of the front and back. So it's minimal, it's not too much movement. We have of course side to side, about this far. And we also have a bottom waist rotation, just a tiny bit. It won't rotate a 360. Now moving on to the back, we have the tail here. So tail can rotate 360 for the articulation and can go up and down as well on this ball joint. Finally, let's check out the leg articulation. So kick forward about this far and backwards. Actually, because of the design, it can't kick up straight. So we can see it's kicking to the side. If you kick up straight, it is blocked by the buttocks design over here. Side, we can bend it about this far. And we also have a swivel. So you can swivel all the way like that and back. So the joints is pretty tight over here. So that's good for a figure like this. Let's check out the knee articulation. So knee bends this far and back. And finally for the feet, we have a rotation over here and a front and back and a toe pivot. While looking at the articulation of the figure, something interesting that I just want to mention compared to the other releases in the SH Figure Arts line, it seems like this figure, because of size, is using a lot of ratchet joints. So that's something different compared to the other releases. I'm sure many of you guys are very interested in the size comparison, so let's get to it. First, let's check out some other SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball series lines. Of course, here we have the SH Scouter Vegeta 2.0. A little bit of a bigger character, SH Ginyu, that was just released as well. And an even bigger character, Broly Full Power from Dragon Ball Super. In terms of sizing, Great A Vegeta is indeed a huge figure as he towers over all of the other SH figure arts that we've seen here. But the thing is, it is still not big enough to be anime or manga accurate. Originally, when they showed the promo shots, this figure was actually much bigger. But I guess later, Bandai Tamashii Nations decided to shrink it a little bit to make it more practical and cost effective. Here goes the round two of their size comparisons. We have a Mayfex figure, Deadpool, SH Figure Arts Thanos, Figma Yugi, and one of the other figures that I reviewed in my previous video, Storm Collectibles Darkseid, which is quite a tall figure but he is still shorter here. Final thoughts on the figure. The Great Ape Vegeta is such a fantastic release in the SH Figure Arts line. I might be a bit biased here because I love the Ozaru form, but I have to give props where it's dual. The sculpture and the paintwork is amazing on this figure compared to a lot of the other SH Figure Arts lines. Even looking at it closely, I notice no paint defects and the detailed sculpt work can be seen all over the body. If I was forced to pick something negative to say about this figure, I would say the sizing of this figure is not anime or manga accurate. But that is understandable because if this figure was accurate in terms of the size compared to the manga or anime, it would be at least five to six times bigger than what we've seen 
even in front of us. So in terms of practicality and cost-wise, it's understandable that they released this figure in this sizing. I feel like it has a good size to it. I have to confess, when I first saw the size of the box and when I opened the box during the unboxing, I was extremely excited because it's a huge breath of fresh air. It was so different compared to opening the other SH Figuarts Dragon Ball series line. I understand that on the market, there are many other statues or figures of the Ozaru form, but none of them are articulated like this one. So this one now holds a special place in my heart. I have to tell you guys, if you're a fan of the Dragon Ball series, the SH Figuarts line, and the Ozaru form, then this figure is a must get. You won't be disappointed. It's definitely one of a kind. So there goes the end of my review. Hope you guys can support the channel by liking and subscribing. If you guys plan to pick this figure up, let me know down in the comments below. As always, stay young at heart and see you guys next time. We're out.